Internet has blurred the line between consumers and creators. Many of its users are contemplating filmmaking or writing a book. I was fortunate to meet at a conference two established creators, Lexi Alexander and Cory Doctorow. My first question to them was what advice would they give to somebody wanting to become a creator? You know, honestly, I don't think there is such a step because I think that, um, you know, when you're an artist, it's a difficult life to choose. And um, I think that you know that. And when you consume, it's not that the consuming of things makes you suddenly go, oh, I think I could do that. If you get the idea that because it looks easy, maybe I should do that, that's probably the wrong idea to have. If you have this longing to become a filmmaker or a musician, then it's in you anyway. If you have the calling, you, you have to do it. I don't think being a consumer necessarily leads to the other. I think um, there are some consumers who um, are, their, their kind of calling is awakened. Well, I think the, the most important advice you can give to people who want to pursue a life in the arts is, is actually not policy advice or technical advice. It's advice on, on working habits. Um, I know that that's not what I'm here to talk about today, but for example, um, don't smoke while you write, because eventually you're going to want to stop smoking, and when you do, if you are afraid that you'll have to stop writing to do it, it will take you longer. I wish I'd never smoked while I wrote. Um, make art every day. Anything you do every day becomes a habit. Habits are things you get for free. So. If you write a long paragraph every day, you'll produce a novel every two years. If you want to be able to pick up the work the next day without having to rack your brains for something creative, just stop in the middle of a sentence so you know the first two or three words you're going to write the next day without having to be creative. Um, uh, concentrate on getting better at things that you're bad at instead of things that you're good at. It's especially when no one's cracking the whip over you, it's really easy to perfect things that you're already great at. But if you think about it, if you work for months on something that you're already sort of 95% proficient on, you might become 96% proficient in. But if you spend those same, same months working on something that you're 10% proficient in, you might quintuple your proficiency over just a few short months. So um, uh, with no one else there to discipline you, you have to be your own disciplinarian. And you can't let yourself get lazy and just practice on polishing the things that you're good at. Listening to them can give us hints about the difficulties of being a creator. Therefore, I have asked them what the internet users can do to support creativity and creators. So I, I don't like the creator, creator audience distinction. I mean, creative people are audiences, audiences are creators. That said, if you want to support the creators you love, um, telling them is a great thing to do. Uh, I, I don't. Sometimes I get emails from people that say, I'm sorry to bother you, but I just wanted to tell you how much I love your books. I don't know anyone who minds being told how much you love their books. Obviously, if they make works that are for sale and you buy their works, that's a great way to help them. Um, lots of uh, creators have different things that they ask of their audiences. Uh, Amanda Palmer wants you to follow her on Twitter so that when she comes to your town and announces that she's uh, having a, a taking over a bar that night and giving a, an impromptu concert and selling TV, CDs and t-shirts that you can tell all of your friends. So different artists have different things that they want. But I think that that personal relationship between the artist and the audience is something that every uh, artist wants. They, they want to know that they've done something that made a difference to someone. Well, you know, it's becoming more of a jungle out there, and this is really a problem. Well, first of all, if you're a young internet kid and you're a genius, you should help us find a new way of marketing, because that's a big issue in the filmmaking industry, where you know, the studios only make these superhero films or any films that are based on something people recognize, like Snow White or, you know, anything that has a recognizable name, Superman, Batman, because they have lost the skill to market. And it's not that they lost the skill, but uh, there's so much media, internet, and how many internet channels, and TV, newspaper. It used to be in the old days, we would look in the newspaper and see what movie goes. But now, no more. Everybody has a different source. So the studios have to spend a lot of money to get people to understand that there's a certain movie out there. I'm waiting for a young generation kid to come and say, here's how we solve this problem, okay? And that hasn't happened yet. If you're not a genius kid and you just say, well, what do I do to support my artist? You know, see whether, follow that person on Twitter or on social media, have a personal relationship and, you know, buy their music, buy their movies. 
in some cases you may buy their movies and that person doesn't necessarily make money but um, you know in my in my case on Twitter even some people say I, I bought your movie and I know you don't make money but I just wanted to let you know that I love it and sometimes that's fantastic to hear because uh, you know if people wouldn't constantly tell me that they love what I do I I probably would have stopped already thank you very much thank you appreciate it and cut